a circle of giant stones, lies in ruins on Salisbury Plain in southern England. Stonehenge, the most enigmatic prehistoric monument on Earth. It was shaped over centuries, but to what purpose? Was it a temple to the sun or the moon? An astronomical calendar? Or a shrine to dead ancestors? It was built about the same time as the Great Pyramids at Giza in Egypt. It was the biggest and most complicated building project in all of Europe, and it's intrigued and fascinated the world for centuries. It's now believed that Stonehenge was built on a site which originally held a wooden structure, and it was built in four phases. More than 4,000 years ago, a small ring of stone stood for around 200 years. Then came a single ring of huge standing stones. Into which a ring of smaller stones was inserted. Then another outer circle of smaller stones was added. Before the circle of massive stones enclosed the whole thing. This was the final phase of construction. Stonehenge's heyday would last around 200 years until 1900 BC. Well over a hundred stones, some of them weighing over 40 tons, were used to erect this structure. But how did the local people do it? There were no stone quarries close by. The first stones to be brought into the circle were the small so-called blue stones. The mystery is that this type of stone is only found in the Priscelli Mountains in South Wales, nearly a hundred miles away. So how on earth did these blue stones get here? One theory is, they got here without human help. According to this theory, a glacier dragged the blue stones from the Welsh mountains and dumped them near Stonehenge at the end of the Ice Age. The trouble with the glacier theory is that it would have left a trail of blue stone fragments in the streams of Salisbury Plain, but none have been found. Most archaeologists think they were put on a raft and floated around the Welsh coast, up the Bristol Channel and on along the River Avon to Stonehenge. An experiment in the 1950s showed that the blue stones could have been dragged along on sledges. The stones were dismantled after a little more than a century. Instead, a much larger structure is built of enormous so-called sarsen stones. Soon after the sarsen circle is built, even larger stones arrive. These are linked pairs, or trilithons. Curiously, they rise in height towards the middle of a horseshoe. The entrance to the monument faces the remaining upright stone, one of the biggest of the Sarsen trilithons. Most archaeologists now believe that it was the mid-winter solstice that was important for the builders of Stonehenge. At this one time of year, as the sun sets, its rays would have shone directly through the narrow gap between the trilithon's two upright stones. In essence, the layout of Stonehenge is a very elaborate way of marking the passage of time. The theory is the people needed to mark midwinter because this was the symbolic beginning of the new agricultural year. But we'll probably never know the whole story of its purpose.